This is part 19 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss dependency injection in detail with an example. This is the same example that we worked with in our previous video. Notice our home controller has a dependency on the service I employee repository. Now the important point to keep in mind is this home controller is not creating an instance of this dependency using the new keyword. Instead, we are injecting this I employee repository into the home controller class using its constructor. So this is called constructor injection. And if we run this project as it stands right now, we get this error. Unable to resolve service for type I employee repository while attempting to activate home controller. Now let's understand why we are getting this error. We are injecting the dependency I employee repository using the constructor. We are storing the constructor parameter in this private field underscore employee repository. And then from the index action method, we are calling get employee method of the interface, which returns an employee object. And we are accessing name property of that employee object. And if you look at this I employee repository, it's actually an interface. So it doesn't contain any code, meaning the interface will not actually do the work. The actual work is done by this mock employee repository. At the moment, as it stands right now within our project, we only have one implementation for this interface I employee repository. And that implementation is within this mock employee repository class. So here is what we want ASP.NET Core to do when someone like this home controller requests this I employee repository. We want ASP.NET Core to create an instance of the implementation of this interface I employee repository. At the moment, we only have one implementation and that implementation is within the mock employee repository class. So when someone requests I employee repository service, we want ASP.NET Core to create an instance of mock employee repository class and inject that instance into the controller. But by default, the ASP.NET Core dependency injection system will not be able to do that. We'll have to register our interface that is I employee repository and its implementation in this case mock employee repository class with ASP.NET Core dependency injection container. We do that in this file startup.cs. We have the startup class here and it contains two methods configure services and configure. If you recollect from our previous videos in the series, we use this configure method to set up our application's request processing pipeline. And we use this configure services method to configure the services required for our application. We use the same method to configure both the ASP.NET Core framework services, such as the MVC services, as well as our custom services, such as this I employee repository service. Notice we have an incoming parameter on this configure services method and the parameter type is I service collection. We use this interface to add our services to the ASP.NET Core dependency injection container. Notice when I type services dot, we have a method called add singleton. This is one of the methods that we can use to add our services to the ASP.NET Core dependency injection container. In addition to add singleton, we also have add transient and add scoped. We'll discuss the difference between these three methods that is add scoped, add transient and add singleton in just a bit. For now, let's use add singleton to add our dependency to the dependency injection container. For that, we use the generic parameter. First, we specify our interface that is I employee repository. We don't have the namespace. Let's bring in the required namespace. And then we specify the implementation of this interface. At the moment, we only have one implementation for I employee repository, and that is our mock employee repository. So with this one line of code, we are basically saying, if someone like this home controller requests this I employee repository service, then create an instance of this mock employee repository class, and then inject that instance. So with this change in place, when we reload the web page, the error is gone and we see the name of the employee as expected. At this point, you might be thinking, why do we have to do all this? Define a constructor parameter and then register our dependency with the dependency injection container. Why can't we simply do something like this? 
So we'll not have the constructor parameter. And then we want a new instance of mock employee repository. So we create a new instance of the class using the new keyword and our application will work. But the problem with this approach is that it tightly couples our home controller with the mock employee repository. Later, if we provide a new implementation for this I employee repository, and if we want to use that new implementation instead of mock employee repository, the code in this home controller has to change. At this point, you might be thinking, what is so difficult about it? It is just one line of code. Instead of using new mock employee repository, we may use new SQL employee repository if we are providing an implementation to retrieve data from a SQL Server database. So what's so difficult about it? Well, at the moment, in our project, we only have one controller. But in a typical real world application, depending on the complexity of the project, you may have 50, 60, or even 100 controllers. And if in all those 100 controllers, we are using mock employee repository, and we provide a new implementation, and then we want to swap out mock employee repository with that new implementation, then the code in all those 50, 60, or 100 controllers has to change. Imagine how much tedious the job is, and it's not only tedious, it's also error prone. So in short, using new keyword like this to create instances of dependencies creates tight coupling. And as a result, our application will be extremely difficult to change and maintain. With dependency injection, we don't have this tight coupling. Even if we have used mock employee repository in 50 other controllers in our application, and if we want to swap out mock employee repository implementation with a new implementation, only one line of code has to change. Instead of using mock employee repository class, we use the name of the class that provides the new implementation. Unit testing also becomes much easier with dependency injection as we can easily swap out dependencies. If this is slightly confusing at the moment, please don't worry. In our upcoming videos, we are going to provide new implementation for this I employee repository. That new implementation will retrieve employee details from an underlying SQL Server database. We'll then replace this mock employee repository with that new implementation. At that point, you'll understand the power and flexibility dependency injection provides. ASP.NET Core provides three methods to register dependencies with the dependency injection container. The method that we use determines the lifetime of that registered service. At the moment, within our application, we are using add singleton method to register our dependency. As the name implies, this method creates a singleton service. A singleton service is created when it is first requested. This same instance is then used by all the subsequent requests. So in general, a singleton service is created only one time per application and that single instance is used throughout the application lifetime. Next, we have add transient. This method creates a transient service. A new instance of a transient service is created each time it is requested. Finally, add scoped. This method creates a scoped service. A new instance of a scoped service is created once per request within the scope. For example, in an MVC application, it creates one instance per each HTTP request but uses the same instance in the other calls within that same web request. If the difference between these three methods is slightly confusing, please don't worry. We'll be revisiting all these three methods several times in our upcoming videos in the series. Out of the box, ASP.NET Core has built-in support for dependency injection. Dependency injection allows us to create systems that are loosely coupled and easy to unit test. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.